Earth Abides by George R. Stewart. So this is episode 28 of a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. And this book here is the 28th book I've read out of 140. And George R. Stewart might be kind of an obscure name in the science fiction genre. And I think that's mostly because this is kind of one of the only novels that he wrote in the science fiction or post-apocalyptic genre. He wrote some other fiction and then he wrote some nonfiction as well. And after reading this and just really loving the book overall and George R. Stewart's writing style, I was kind of looking for some other books to maybe pick up in the future. And from what he's written, there's, there's definitely nothing like this, but he did write a nonfiction book about the Donner Party that sounds interesting. I grew up in Grass Valley, California for a while, and I've always been, inter been interested in that area and then the story of the Donner Party, so I might have to be on the lookout for that one. But let's go ahead and get into this book. So this is a really good early version of post-apocalyptic that I think most modern readers would would find this very entertaining, age very well. A lot of issues that it brings up and kind of the thought experiment that it goes through were way ahead of its time. So I think this book is a very easy one to recommend to anybody, whether you're into science fiction, post-apocalyptic books, or maybe even just reading in general. Like I think if you've never read a post-apocalyptic book, this this would probably be a really good place to start. Not only it was one of the first ones, but everything about it was just done so well. So let's go ahead and just get into the kind of plot summary of this book. So this book, it it's taking it takes place with a, a single kind of main character throughout the whole novel, and his name is Isherwood Williams, but he goes by Ish through the book. And he's kind of just doing his thing, you know, this takes place, I would imagine, in the late 40s, about the time George R. Stewart wrote this. And so he's a bit of a loner. He lives around the Bay Area of Northern California. And it appears he lives alone, and he was out kind of doing his thing outside, and he happens to get bit by a rattlesnake. And he kind of, he knows what to do. He stays calm. He gets back to his cabin and he just kind of wants to let this poison run its course through his system. And so he goes through this period of this like kind of deep illness and kind of out of it for a while. But about halfway through this ordeal, some people come up to his cabin, which he thinks is a little interesting. And they ask like, what's, what's going on? He just says that he's sick and then they instantly bolt and take off and leave him there. And he thinks that that's kind of an odd reaction to someone saying they're sick. Like he was expecting them to help help him out in some way or at least check on him, but they just like took off. So eventually the illness runs its course and he starts feeling better. And so he heads down to one of his closest neighbors and then eventually into the town. And he starts realizing there's something that happened. He's, he doesn't see anybody. Everything just looks abandoned. And then he manages to break into a store and read the newspaper and kind of starts piecing together that there was this virus or this plague that had started making its way around the world. And everyone was getting sick and some people were dying, but they didn't think it was going to be that bad. But ultimately he figures out that it really was that bad and it's pretty much wiped out the majority of the humans on the planet. And there doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason of who was affected and who wasn't. There later in the book we're even we have some like family members and we think maybe this um, immunity could have been passed down, but that doesn't really seem to be the case. So it just kind of seems to be this odd uh, virus, and it really isn't talked about that much. Most of the book after this setup is just Isherwood's life. Um, and he's probably around 30 maybe when this happens. So the rest of his life, this, this book just chrono chronologically goes over his life. And everything that he kind of goes through. And so he spends some time 
kind of traveling around the US trying to figure out the extent of this issue to see if there's pockets where more humans have either survived or kind of regrouped and tried to settle a little bit of um, civilization. But he ends up making it back towards the Bay Area. He meets some other people and it's kind of their story of, of how they build, rebuild their version of civilization based on this very small group of, of people. Originally, it's just a very small handful of people, I think like five or six or something, but they start having children. There's a few other people that maybe come and go throughout the time. But that's really it. There's, there, there isn't like this, um, you know, real deep plot line that's complicated with this huge reveal and resolve um, you know, these these issues that get resolved at the end. It's more just their life and what they go through. And it may sound like it's not that engaging, but I think the, the narrative style that George R. Stewart put into this book is what really kept me engaged. So the book is broken up into like three parts, and you'll have these sections that really go through the, you know, micro level of Isherwood's life and what he's going through physically, mentally, interpersonally. And then, then there's, so there's these longer sections that, that go through a slower kind of burn of his life. And then there'll be this like little interlude that will jump maybe 10 or 20 years. And they'll just kind of, these little interludes are, are just basically one chapter kind of telling you some highlights of what happened through some of these years. And then you get back into the longer narrative, the day-to-day -day life, what him and his little tribe are going through. And then you'll get another one of these interludes and then it kind of wraps up at the end towards the end of Isherwood's life. So there was just this real interesting, um, you know, idea and the, this narrative structure let you get into this like day to day what's going on how what you do to keep your little tribe going and then you get this kind of broader macro level look at their how their tribe is trying to assimilate into this new world and you know, it, it kind of has parallels with civilization as a whole and all these different ideas, and it was just done really well. He also spends some time talking about humanity's place, not only on the earth, but with all the other living creatures on here, from insects to rodents to deer and mountain lions and elk, and, and it was just real interesting. For a book that was written in 1949 and and how he connected humanity's place in the world and our impact on the world and our impact on other creatures. It was just done really well. And of course, I don't think he got everything perfect there, but he was at least thinking and, and looking down that road. And that's something that's super prevalent today. And we find more and more through science and history of how our species is interrelated to everything else. So we, if you just wiped out most of the humans, the animal, um, the animals that are left, they're going to go through some, some issues too, because you take this, this major factor on, on earth and remove it and then see what happens with, with, uh, you know, rodent populations and insects and all these other kind of things. So just really interesting part that, that he put into this book and it was just done really well. And then you have a lot of like internal conflicts with our main character. He's kind of taken on this role in the tribe of being the one to have the most forethought and he's kind of maybe the most educated or most well read out of this group. So he kind of takes it upon himself. And as he gets older, he's kind of looking for someone to pass this down to. And so that whole kind of idea part of this book was done really well. Overall, this was just an amazing read for me. I'm going to give this a five star. It might not be on the top level five star for me. It probably kind of 
borders the line between a four and a five star book, but it just had so many things packed into it and it was just a real easy read. It wasn't complicated, it was easy to follow, but it still just touched on some really um, cool ideas and themes throughout the whole book. So I would recommend this to anyone, whether you're a fan of science fiction, post-apocalyptic books, or just a reader in general. This book was written in 49. It, it is held up amazingly well. It doesn't suffer from a lot of the sexist and racist ideals that were kind of just part of society back then, unfortunately. And this, just, this one just gets a wholehearted recommendation from me to anybody. So that's it for that one. I'm on to reading The Female Man next by Joanna Russ. This is another new author for me. This is a, a thing I'm doing for November. Came up with a challenge uh, called New Author November to try to read as many new authors, novels that you haven't read in the past. I don't even know if I've read any of her short fiction though, so this might be a completely new author to me. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and look for the review for Female Man coming up soon. Thanks.